Okay. This is episode 11. This is 12. We just did 11. 12. We just did 11. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, welcome back to Power Expanders. Is my microphone on? Test, 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 test. <laughs> we have BC with doing the most, as you've seen all throughout this series, um, except for that one episode. We did have all the Mead Stampede guys. Oh. That's the only people, Got that's it. the only time we've, it's not just been us. Got it. I thought you had secretly replaced no. me. So. <laughs> no. That'd be really awkward. I mean, I've got like a whole graphic image of you and I like drinking mead. That's true. It'd be hard that's, to... That's the whole point of this show. Is, is We've... Friendship. <laughs> friendship. <laughs> Built on friendship. Let's drink mead. So, um, point of the show, BC and I bring meads to each other. Don't tell each other what we've got. We have empty label... Not empty, but no labeled bottles. Mine says... Well, oh, you're... Ooh. Red. Red. Mine's, mine's totally color, blank. The color of the meat in the bottle. <laughs> um, I have brought this. BC has brought this. And we're going to go ahead and crack them open and hopefully um, be pretty accurate <laughs> with our perceptions. So let's get started. Hey, we were last episode. Hey, so we were. Maybe, we'll, maybe we've hit our streak. Yeah, I don't know. Every time <laughs> I say that, I feel... Uh -huh. okay. um, we have brought polar opposite colors. Vastly different. Yours is super... Dark. I mean, it's clear though. Mm -hmm. Clear, you can see through it, but it is dark. Yeah, look at that. Like glass. Yeah. That's I mean, yours is clear too. Yeah, it is. Um, but mine's more gold ish. Yeah. Um, All right, aroma check then. Okay. Um, you want to start yours or mine? Let's start with yours. All right. I think go lightest to darkest, right? Yeah. Let's do it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say like stinky. <laughs> <laughs> but it has a. It kind of smells like Fermate O. Oh, interesting. I could, yeah, I could, I could you see what you mean. mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could understand like, that. Like, um, not like a bready yeastiness, but like that autolyzed yeast. Like, hmm. you know, some people describe it as like Parmesani. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh huh. I, I, I want to let this breathe a little yeah. <laughs> bit and then come back to it because I'm, I'm wondering if that's just like something just gassing something. out as it's, as it's, Ooh. freshly poured. Yeah, this is a, a very, very cherry uh, vanilla, mm -hmm. definitely on the nose. Maybe some uh, some light toast oak of some sort. But there is like a, a warm, rich um, uh, honey aroma in there mm -hmm. that is like, cool. That, that vanilla and that like cherry, I only can think of as cherry. Cherry, mm. dark fruit, like, like a... Um, no, raspberry. Raspberry would be brighter. Hmm. It's a mystery. It is mystery. But it could be... It has a little bit of a mixed berry I, like idea okay. to me. Um, it smells good, though. I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can agree with you. I smell an oakiness yeah. on it. Like, that's kind of the first thing that hits my nose. And they're vanilla and oak. Like, you can really get, I feel like, a lot of that softness. Okay. Let's go back to yours now that it's had some time. I see what you mean, though. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I mean, it's faded a little bit. Yeah. But there's... <laughs> this is going to sound really weird, but it almost has, uh, like, a roasted squash kind of smell. Oh, <laughs> roasted... You know, like a butternut squash or a spaghetti yeah, squash when you I, roast yeah. it in the oven? That's interesting. Not, like, savory, necessarily, yeah. but, like, squashy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little squashy. Just a little squashy. <laughs> But it does it does smell a little Parmesan-y, too. Uh huh. Very interesting. That I'm gonna is... guess this is an age thing. That this is nah, this I, is youth. I'm gonna guess it is too, because. But I'll, once the reveal happens, I'm sure we can diagnose <laughs> we, we the can problem. We can walk back from there. Okay. Uh, What's next? Let's go and taste him. Okay. Let's we'll start with yours. How about that? <laughs> okay. Is that? Would you rather no, go no, opposite? That's fine. That's fine. I'm I'm just, I'm just so curious about. Oh wait. Stuff. Then you go in my first. <laughs> we'll go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing I want more than a little parmesan and a little glass of cheese mead. I know how well that and works out. And you know out. about that, yeah. <laughs> you know all about the cheese. <laughs> Hold on. I think that the, the nose is still convincing. Yeah. That there's a cheesiness in here. Hmm. There, it is thick. Yeah. It's got some chew to it. Yep. Uh, there is a bit of fermentation funk in there. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a yeast character, an ester of some kind that's like farmhousey. It's funky mm -hmm. and like earthy. There's there is a little, weirdly there's a like a little bit of umami in there. Mm. 
Interesting. I wouldn't call it salty or brackish or briny, yeah. but there's like a little bit of a savory umaminess in there that weirdly I don't <laughs> dislike. <laughs> you know? Hmm. Like I'm thinking like, you know, deglaze the pan with some swordfish or something, like play up yeah. that umami buttery yeah. kind of. I, guess, I see what you're saying, yes. It does. It is young. I will. I will tell you that. I feel like a lot of that yeastiness is from how young this is. Mm -hmm. We're probably three and a half months old on this guy. You know, I think that's fun though because that that adds a little bit to the challenge of me trying to know what's in this glass. Yeah. Uh, it does. It tastes like uh, it's got a little bit of that youth that you find in like a young country fruit wine too. I've used the word twang to describe uh -huh. that before, and I got shamed in the comments because apparently twang is a bad <laughs> thing. But it has that little bit of like, it it, tur it curls your tongue sideways yeah. a little bit. And that's the thing that I find with like fruit wines ages out, and so presumably the same would be true for here. Mm -hmm. But it's it a little bit like curls your tongue. Yeah. It's interesting. Okay. Swap over? Swap over. Little. I feel like we need some oyster crackers. Yeah. This is yeah. going to be a Very different. Yeah, shift. I can already say. <laughs> Without even tasting, I know it's going to be different. Okay. I feel like I get one sip to like clear out the previous moment. Mm -hmm. oh, there's definitely a tart, dark, like a raspberry note in here. I'm getting it more on the palate. Like a, yeah, it's um, a dark honey. Like I'm getting like a, not, man, uh, the darkness of like buckwheat, but not the funky, um, farmy side of buckwheat. I'm just getting mm. that dark molassesy avocado honey, you know, kind of darkness in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then a, a, a little bit of like raspberry cherry realm. This one also is a little bit thick mm -hmm. too. It's got some body. There's that oak. Oak is very present. Vanilla is very present. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's very smooth. You can tell this one has, uh, has had time to meld <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, those flavors are really, they're playing off each other well. Hmm. Whatever fruit it is, to me it is, oh, maybe it's in the black currant. It's that dark, like, you know what I'm going for? Like the dark, I do. rich fruit that's like a, a rich cherry, rich raspberry, rich yeah. black currant. But it doesn't have like a thick, jammy quality uh -oh. to it. It drinks whinier. Yes, yeah. Because I think that's the, you know, when I think about like currants or boysenberries or blackberries or tart cherries, I think about a mead that's like really dense, yeah. like a desserty mead. And this like achieves those like big, bold flavors, but it drinks more like a wine than it does like a sack mead. Yeah. This is, this is putting off really big, um, like, uh, black currant raspberry vibes to me right now. But I do like, I like that it is more wine-esque, like you're saying. It's not, like sometimes it's nice to have a, a mead that's just like super thick, like jammy, I mean truly jammy, like you're drinking it, you're like, oh, it's super good, but it can be overwhelming. And to me, this <laughs> yeah. is like, like I want to drink more of this, like with a really, um, I mean, like a Shrams level fruit bomb mead. Like it is good, but like, mm -hmm. For me, I'm gonna go split a Shrams bottle with like four people because I, there's no way I'm gonna clear out a 375 of that yeah. thing and not feel I mean, my your, heart. Your <laughs> blood sugar would be through the roof. Yeah. This, yeah, which is not to say it's not delicious. It's yeah. just like they're different drinking experiences. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take a guess. Take a step. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, we're right off. I mean, well, gives you time me, to, me, yeah, yeah it gives you time to. Here. I think that this right here is, I keep tearing between cherry, uh, black currant raspberry, but I'm gonna go and land and say that this is a like a um, raspberry mead with like I'm gonna go and say buckwheat honey or some adjacent honey realm that is that dark character, um, oaked with some like Hungarian medium toast, the heavy toast oak because it feels heavier, and I think that's where all your vanilla comes from. Okay, that's my thought. I don't know what the hell this is. And it's the type of thing where I just have to like take a shot in the dark. Uh huh. It's so weird. <laughs> I mean, it's a weird flavor, and it's uh, the youth. Like yeah. I said, like kind of disguises some of what I'm trying to taste in here. I pick up honey character. There's an acid in there mm -hmm. that's striking me as like probably tartaric acid. Yeah. It's not a biting acid, but it's not a real round acid either. So I'm trying to think of like what in that realm there would be. Yeah. There's like tamarind and mm. white wine grapes. 
but I don't think it's either of those. <laughs> I am going to guess that this is a Perry made with honey and perhaps some artificial <laughs> artificial of, me no form of <laughs> pears that are not real pears or some like there it tastes fruity but it's not like a fruit i can identify at all it's like if you made fruit cocktail mead which i guess you kind of did before <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's I, it's something lightly fruited i guess with <laughs> with a uh, wildflower honey and it needs about another year to sit in that bottle I 100% agree on the, the year portion. That's, this needs a lot of time. What I've, uh, I'll start with mine. Yeah. What I've brought here is not the finished product of something. I, this is a stair stepper to the final um, result of the video. So this is a, an Acer Glen. Okay. <laughs> okay. So with mocha oak <laughs> and um, I want to say I used uh, uh, orange blossom honey. I'm gonna double check my. I could I could pick up an orange blossom note if you like twisted my arm. How did you introduce the maple syrup? Primary, all in the primary. Okay. So what's happened here is how much? Six pounds of uh, maple syrup. It's a three gallon batch. Six pounds, three pounds of honey. Um, so that's kind of my split right now. Mm -hmm. Came back and I back sweetened with a little bit more honey. I can't remember exactly what kind. And then I added my mocha oak chips. Mm -hmm only about three days ago. Okay. And they've really kicked off and started to add some flavor. Got it. Um, but I brought this because it's in development and I wanted to see if you'd pick up any maple. And so I'm thinking that I, I need don't. to come. I, no, no, which is fine though. I'm thinking, <clears throat> the thing is when I, I taste it, I'm looking for it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. What I now realize, I, I've never made an Acer Glen and I picked this because you are, you've done I've a lot done of Acer. a lot of Acer Glen. There's still a lot in that closet so over there. So I think I'm gonna back sweeten with some more maple syrup yeah. and come back with that, because I still have some. Yeah. And I think that will help bring that flavor out and also I leave think, it to age. Well, I think those oak chips, like really, really doing their work on this mm -hmm. is gonna help too. As I was developing my Acer Glen recipe, what I realized was, was a big, heavy punch of oak yeah. is really important to like, bring back some of that woody character mm -hmm. of the maple syrup and then a heavy sweetening obviously brings back that like sugary yeah. candy flavor it's it's a tough thing to balance i can see what you're going for here and i agree with your assessment <laughs> <laughs> it is young but the fun thing is like i said this is just the next step so this mm -hmm. there is a video for this um i'm in works on it currently i'm basically going to take everything we did here and go and fix it so you'll see those changes on the video you can find that video down below love it um yeah okay so so this wait 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 oh you no, actually i guessed sorry okay well r r remind me of your guess i said it was like a, a dark raspberry buckwheat uh -huh. honey dark honey toast with like a heavy american hungarian some sort okay. of oak in there with vanilla okay so this was interestingly enough a batch from one of my recipe tests that i ah. was doing <laughs> we never planned this by the way <laughs> this is always now my video is already out i've already published my final video on this but this was one of the four whatever batches that i did as i was working on this recipe and a lot of times when i edit my videos they are multiple pieces of footage being put into one video. So yeah. you might see like batch two here and batch three there and batch uh -huh. four there, but the final recipe that I, whatever the final batch, that's the recipe I present. But sometimes I use clips depending on mm -hmm. if I got a good angle or whatever. And so this batch actually didn't make it to the final video. This mm. was my like, well, it kind of did. I mean, my primary was yeah. this batch, but this was like my presentation batch, but I'd already bottled the batch that I, I wanted to use for the bottling portion. So does this all make sense from like a TV <laughs> land kind of perspective? So what all that is to say is I just had this batch just sitting around in a carboy. Yeah. And so I was like, well, what should I do with it? So I put it in that oak barrel over there and I left it for several months. And as you can see on the side of that oak barrel, the thing that was oh. in there before the Merlot Piment was a barley wine. When I bottled the barley wine out of that whiskey barrel, uh -huh. there was still like a half a gallon of barley wine, and I just racked this right on top of it. Mm, okay. Okay. So this is a Merlot piment. So the fruit you're tasting in there is Merlot, which does often have some of those fruit characters you're okay. talking about. 
There is uh, mostly alfalfa honey, oh. but also a big dose of buckwheat honey, which is where you're getting those buckwheat barnyardy notes from. I'm very impressed with your tasting <laughs> because you nailed the buckwheat honey, the fruit character, yes. not necessarily the fruit, <laughs> and it's an American oak barrel. It's a whiskey barrel. And that obviously brings some vanillins into the mix, but also the barley wine that was in there uh -huh. brought some big chocolatey vanilla notes in there along with it. So it sat in there for three or four months and I eventually bottled it. I was like, oh, shit, this turned out good. <laughs> it, is, it is really good, actually. I mean, I, I want to get into barreling. That's, you've had this for a while and every time I walk in, I'm like, oh, man, I feel like I need to do it. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for the day I have a little more space. But um, yeah, uh, this is really good. You know, one of the, the really fun things about a five gallon barrel is that it's like actually the right amount of oaking uh -huh. on a home scale for the most part, but you can use it several times. Yeah. So as you see, I just write whatever the next thing uh -huh. is in there. Oftentimes I just leave a bunch of whatever was in there in there and rack on top of it. Uh -huh. And it becomes this kind of like fun experiment of what What's are you gonna the, get next? Yeah. What's the term whenever you just keep adding on to some, the, um... It's like Solera? So yeah, I, I remember I, I tried to do it for a while with like a, a gallon of mead and just like mm -hmm. every time I had extras just, and but then it became a headspace thing and you have yeah. to like, it's hard to do. Yeah. I, it's really good. And um, yeah. I, I enjoy, I enjoy all of the characters that are in this because they're like complex. And, mm -hmm. and part of tasting mead is like finding things that are complex and, and trying to draw out and um, actually understand what you're tasting. If you go back to episode one of this show, man, I was off base with half my tastings. I mean, so I think both of us were. Yeah. So, the, but this experiment experience of uh, tasting things is helping grow the palate, which is the whole point of the show. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we get away from talking about this, but we do this to better our palates, but to show you, you could do this to better your palate. You don't even have to have um, like homebrew you could do this with some friends and mm -hmm. say, hey, you bring a bottle of wine, you bring a bottle of wine or mead, and let's, let's taste and talk. And get out your sip and savor deck. There we go. <laughs> little, so um, <laughs> do this with your friends, seriously. And yeah. you'll have some fun with it. It's also fun just to like be wrong or be right. It's cool to be right, but sometimes it's, it's funny when you're like, oh, I was getting grapes, and they're like, this is a banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. I, that was, what is it, picking up pears in here. Yeah. It's an Acer one. So um, check out, this is perfect promo. <laughs> check out <laughs> Sip and Savor. <laughs> you can find this. This is BC's project. This is uh -huh. actually a, a great way to taste through things. It gives you vocabulary. It is literally like we should be sponsored by Sip and Savor. <laughs> oh, Maybe really, yeah. <laughs> we'll get a little cut. We'll get a little ad here. You were, you were in the promo video. That's true. So but, I, but, I think that carries your endorsement. <laughs> so uh, go check out Sip and Saver. Go check out BC doing the most if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you soon with yet another episode. Maybe not soon. These come out like every four months. So. We have, we've got a bottle stuff. We, yeah. You know, it takes a while. <laughs> so we'll see you then. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.